Welcome everybody to another video on the channel. Today we are doing a little bit of mapping. We're doing some slope angle shading and some scouting in the field. So today, if, if you've been listening to the podcast a lot lately, you've heard people like Adam and Heath Jolly from Budget Bucks Outdoors here on YouTube. You've heard Adam Tucker, um, who is hunting and fishing God's Country, another YouTuber uh, who hunts mountainous, aggressive terrain, or Chuck Young of Arkansas, who doesn't have any videos, but you heard him a couple weeks ago on the podcast from the time this video dropped. All three of these guys all like to target aggressive terrain. They like steep stuff, they like to find big mountains, and they like to find terrain that is going to basically force movement. I guess that is kind of what you could explain aggressive terrain as. It's just terrain that forces movement because of how rough it is. If you want to check out those podcast episodes, I'd highly recommend specifically looking at episode 378, 380, and 368. In episode 390 of the podcast, which I'll link below, Chuck Young was talking about using slope angle shading to not only find these more aggressive terrain features, but also to plan his access routes into the mountains. So today we're going to be looking at all things slope angle shading and mapping, and we're going to go out into the field and kind of show you all what's going on with it. So why is slope angle shading and aggressive terrain important? Well, we've interviewed a lot of mountain hunters in our couple years we've been doing this podcast now, and pretty much all of them like to key in on this stuff because, once again, it forces movement. When you have something like a, a boulder field or a bluff, aka a cliff, which you'll see later in this video, or just extremely steep terrain, that's going to be terrain that forces movement or, or greatly encourages movement. Like the deer are going to want to go around this and not walk right up the middle of it. Or if it's just a really, really steep hill, there might be one spot on that hill where the deer really want to walk and so you go up there and that's when you find those just big nice wallowed out trails that they're using a lot. It also makes some of the best pinch points and funnels that you're going to find in mountain country. So one of the most classic examples of these funnels is a bluff gap. And one of our most favorite guests, Michael Perry here in Alabama, really targets bluff gaps and focuses in on terrain features like that because it's such a good funnel. And we've got a great uh, bluff gap example that we're actually going to show you later in this video that we found when we did the in the field portion. All right, guys, so this is where we went scouting the other day. This is actually a state park here in central Alabama. A lot of people watching this video are probably familiar with this area. So as you can see, I've already got two little pins right here. I actually dropped these when we were out in the field because as we will get to in a minute, we found a pretty cool bed right here and a nice bluff gap right here above it and actually found some beds right up in here above that and then jumped a buck right in this area. So it was a really eventful day. It was fun to go up in there and kind of look at all this stuff and get to see a buck to boot. So that was a great time. Uh, I'm just going to show you all to get to your slope angle shading. It's really simple. Um, we're using the desktop version of Onyx here, but it's the same thing on your phone. As of right now, with how they have the folders organized, you just go over to map layers, click on that, and you're going to go down to land and access. So you've got all your, your whole layer library right here for all your different states and you're gonna go down to land and access, and boom, here it is, slope angle. I'll say, if you don't find this under my layers, you will be able to find it under layer library. So go over there and look for it if you can't find it. Um, but under my layers right here, we got slope angle shading. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that on, and boom, there it is. It's just that simple. It shows up very quickly. And as you can see, it literally just shades the entire map and kinda is, gives you a lot of information on what you're dealing with as far as the hills go. So as we can see, right here, these little areas where there's no shading, as you can tell by the topo lines as well, there's there's not a hill there, it's flat. So this is like a flat creek bottom. You can see these kind of flat areas. This is actually a flat ridge top right here. And then you kind of start going up. So your green stuff is gonna be very not steep. It's gonna be very gentle, just kind of a normal hill. You get up into some of this more yellow stuff, you start getting, getting into some steep terrain. Maybe not steep enough to really funnel movement per se, uh, but steep enough where things kind of start getting interesting. And then you kind of have this lighter red color right here, and this is where these two pins are. Um, we're going to get to this in a second in the actual in the field portion of this video, but check this out. This bed is actually right on this terrain transition where it goes from yellow to light red which was kind of interesting, and this is something that you could really see on the ground. It shows up on the video okay, but when you're in there, you can really tell that, that transition. So there's this bed right here. Um, we'll get into this more in a minute, but you know you can see this red, this light red. Well, this is significantly steep stuff. This is where we start finding some interesting things, and a lot of times in this, as you'll see, there can be bluffs, and there can be some really big boulders and other terrain features within this. So 
you know, you can kind of see there's almost a band of this lighter red that kind of wraps around the mountain right here. The in the field portion of this video is actually going to be a really good example of why I think when you see something like that, you should just go walk it and check it out. And then the last thing I'll show you before we kick it over to the in the field stuff is over here you got more, you got a lot of the darker red and even some purple in here. That is going to be straight up bluffs, cliffs, straight up and down, rock wall type stuff like the the most aggressive steep terrain that you can possibly get, uh, which is always great to go look at. That's something that we've had multiple guests talk about, like I mentioned earlier. And so that's kind of what it looks like. Um, it's very intuitive. It's very simple, especially if you're newer at reading a topo map. This makes everything a lot easier because some of these differences in topo lines can be a little, pretty subtle. And until you get really good at actually reading a topo map, uh, it can take you a long time to pick up on these things, or you might miss some of these things. Like for instance, like the, the transition from yellow right here to red, you just, you're looking at the distance between these topo lines and it just kind of tightens up going up the hill. And even more so right here, and then even more so right there. And so uh, for somebody who is new with reading topo maps, I cannot recommend this enough. This is going to be a great tool, but even if you're someone like me, I do mapping for a living actually, and I still like it because it allows me to literally instantly see where those bluffs and that aggressive terrain are on the map rather than zooming around and examining all these topo lines and everything. I can just turn this layer on and bam, it's right there in front of me, super fast and simple. So it's really a must have, I can't recommend it enough, but now that I'm kind of showing you how to use it on the computer, let's kick it over to the in the field portion and take a look at some of the stuff that we found when we actually went and scouted this area. Okay, so right now where we're standing, or where I'm standing at, is at the break between light red and yellow and slope angle shading on on X. Also, we're on the northwest facing slope. The sun is right now 840 in the morning. The sun is coming up over that ridge as you can see and it still hasn't heated this side up. So even at 8.40 in the morning, we still have falling thermals. You can feel the air coming off the side of this ridge dropping down. And if you want to see some interesting content, we're actually gonna do some videos coming up with smoke bombs to show a visual of what this looks like. That's so you can see the falling thermals for yourself, but super interesting. And again, you can't always just hunt high in the mornings because uh, you're gonna have rising thermals because in a spot like this guys you're still gonna have falling thermals until probably 11 o'clock in the morning before it finally heats this side of the ridge up to start having those thermals rise up the ridge so make sure you pay attention to that all right so as you can see next to me we're sitting next to a pretty nice bed that we just found in the steep stuff if you look at on x we are actually pretty much right on the transition between yellow which is downhill a little bit less steep and the kind of that light red color which is uphill where it gets a lot steeper this bed is right here on this transition, right where, I mean, it's a very subtle change, but you can tell when you're out here, there is a change. And he's right here on this little flat spot. You can see an entry trail right here and right there, and then behind me and then downhill. So there's a lot of different trails coming to this one bed. Um, he's also on what you could almost call a little micro point. There is a very slight draw right here behind the camera. And uh, he's kind of sitting here on the where this this hill kind of wraps around into that draw. So you know he can see into that draw and past the draw. He can see down the draw, and he can see all the way back here. So it's just kind of a neat spot um, when it comes to terrain to see how this deer is using the terrain to his advantage. Now this guy's is a bluff gap. We are just up above that buck bed on this ridge, and there's a really really good trail coming up through the bluff gap. As, you, as you've seen some of the other footage, this is a really good sized bluff right here, this rock wall. And uh, the deer just coming up and going right through it in this one gap. Um, we have guys like Michael Perry, who we've interviewed on the podcast before, who likes to hunt specifically bluff gaps. Maybe not necessarily on the gap, but wherever they transition down below it or above it as a really good pinch point. And clearly they're using, I mean, there's some really, really good sized tracks right here on this trail as they're cutting up through here. So again, another thing you can find, this is something that doesn't necessarily always show up on slope angle shading, but once you find these really steep areas, you can come in here and this is the stuff you find boots on the ground once you get into one of these locations. So another great find and something that's there, definitely very applicable uh, to any hunter that's trying to find these different pinch points up in this really steep terrain. All right guys, so right now this is where aggressive terrain really comes into play, especially when you're using slope angle shading. Just behind me here, uh, when you're looking at the map, and we'll show part of this in the video, uh, is where we start having some dark red slope angle shading. Uh, 
and when you look at it right behind me it may not translate very well in the video but this is very very large rock structure that has a bunch of entanglement of cover in and around it and the deer are definitely coming around the lip of this ridge working around the back side of it and also coming below it and around it through this drainage just down here below me this is one of those things that really comes into advantage when you're looking at say like onyx maps and you're looking at the slope angle shading, how you can kind of have an idea before you put boots on the ground of potentially how the deer are going to be using areas like this. And again, this is dark red. This isn't like that lighter red stuff that we saw earlier. This is stuff that you could traverse, uh, but it's going to get very, very sketchy in a lot of places because you're actually going to have to go up and over big rocks. Um, and that's exactly how it sets up. So some of the deer aren't going to walk directly straight through it, but they're going to walk around the edge of it a lot of times. Uh, or what we might just go find when we look over here, potentially bedding on the top of it or just off to the side of it uh, where it kind of takes off part of an area they have to worry about when it comes to predation. So we are just down from that super aggressive terrain that we talked about that's right here behind my shoulder uh, which is that dark red and Andrew got on top of this rock bluff which you're looking along right now. He was on top and saw this big trail just down below it. We came around here and there's a couple big beds and it might just be I don't know what to say. I mean, it's a couple, either one deer he's moving or it's multiple deer bedded up against this rock wall. There's one bed here specifically that is, I mean, it, it's got hair all along this edge. And then even where the camera's at, at the foot of the camera, there's another bed. Then there's a lot of hair in it, a lot of white hair. And you can tell it's a deer or multiple deer laying here quite often uh, because the amount of hair that's like kind of matted down. Like as you kind of move the leaves back, you can find more and more hair. So. It's definitely an area that, you know, there is multiple deer or a specific, say, buck that's using this area quite often. Right behind this corner of this rock is a, uh, of a drainage a, across from this super aggressive uh, rock uh, train feature. That, again, it's dark red on the map, and there's trails that wrap around the head of it. If a deer or a buck is laying specifically right here, when these falling thermals come down in the afternoon, he's gonna be able to smell anything that comes through that gap right there. Uh, anything at the head of that drainage, all that scent's gonna come down. And also, it seemed like we might have found a pretty big licking branch up there uh, in that location as well. So again, this buck here will smell any of those falling thermals coming down. Has a hard back structure here that kind of keeps him protected from predators so he doesn't have to watch behind him. And he has a good visual going downhill as well in this location. So. There's a lot kind of going for it in this location here. All right, guys, so Andrew just went across the drainage uh, and there's another bed. All right, there actually there's a few beds right there on that rock wall. So right below that uh, aggressive terrain that we talked about. So let's go over there and go check that out. All right, guys, so here's a good example of the red stuff on the map. So your dark red and your purple is gonna be stuff like this. You're gonna have big rock bluffs, very steep terrain, stuff that you're basically gonna to have to have climbing gear to get up. And we're sitting right here at the base of where this red, this dark red starts on the map. And so as you can see, we're right here at the base of this bluff and right here is a big nice bed. There's actually a line of beds going along uh, this, this rock bluff right here. And if you look in them, they're just slam covered with hair. I mean, they are covered with hair and it's all fresh hair too where these deer are pushing up against these rocks and uh, bedding. I guess for the coolness of these rocks, they're very cool to the touch, and they're kind of hanging out here in the summertime. So really what it boils down to, you know, especially with a bunch of past podcast guests, you have aggressive terrain over here, you've got aggressive terrain over on the other side of the draw, and right here you've got a high concentration of deer sign. You've got scrapes, there's some rubs up top, trails, and beds, where they're just concentrating around this stuff. So. Uh, it's a super, super useful tool to be able to go out and pretty much instantly see where this is on a map and say, okay, there's the, there's the dark red, there's the purple, there's the light red. I'm going to go and check that out first and then hopefully come up and, and find stuff like this. All right, guys, just to give you a better view, this is going to be your dark red or purple train on the slope angle shading. It's going to be rock bluff, cliffy type stuff. Uh, and again, that's the advantage of that tool is you can go ahead and you can look at that map and instantly identify where these things are on a map and go straight to them rather than have to come in and, and hunt for them and, and kind of wander around until you find one. Uh, All right, I'm a little out of breath. That's what it takes when you're in the mountain and you're kind of really fat. <laughs> but uh, as we were walking along the bluff below like these little rocks, uh, I looked up, I was like, man, 
I saw this dark spot. I'm like, man, I bet you there's a bed up here too. And I mean, literally we're 30 yards from where we were just, you know, recording. Um, and we get up here and this might be the best bed yet. It is nothing but dirt. And you can literally see the hair from like where y'all are at. I mean, it is just nothing but hair in here. I mean, all this white stuff's all hair. Um, it's like a little, it's like a little, uh, just a wet spot coming out of this bluff where there's some moisture level, some moisture is, is leaking out some water. And clearly this screen's big buck. And he's just tucked up in this stuff. And he's actually got, just down in front of him, he can see, getting way out from this bed. But just right here in front of him is like these little rock outcroppings. That, I mean, I had to climb up. You probably saw some footage of that. And he's just bedded right here. Um, I mean, that is super impressive. I mean, you can just, the, the amount of hair is just awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So this is what gets us fired up to come out here and, and find stuff like this. And then share it with you guys of like what you could find if you, you know, Again, focus on a lot of this super heavy, uh, aggressive terrain. Again, like what you find on that slope angle shading. Use it to your advantage. Come out here and scout it. And it's amazing the amount of sign you can find around a lot of this stuff. Um, especially like areas like this. Like this is the only thing, again, that's like draws the deer to the area. It's so cool in here. Like I can feel, I mean, it's, feel, it's like a little air conditioning because you can feel all the moisture in here. And it's just like the cool breeze just cools it off. Uh, it's almost like a swamp cooler. So this is outstanding. Outstanding.